In this video, I will show you how to use sine, cosine, and tangent to find missing sides on a right triangle. So first of all, you have to be able to label the sides as opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Let's start with the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. The corner of this little box is always pointing at the hypotenuse. So we know that this will be the hypotenuse right here. So I will label it hype for hypotenuse. Now, the opposite and adjacent depend on the angle. So circle the angle that you have and then draw an arrow going away from it. That will always be pointing at the opposite leg of the triangle. The remaining triangle, or the one that's really close by, is the adjacent leg of the triangle. So, um, we can use this little acronym mnemonic device to help us remember the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, we have x and we have 7. Those are the two sides we're dealing with. That is opposite and adjacent. All right, so this TOA part of SOHCAHTOA reminds us that tangent is opposite over adjacent. So um, that tells us that we will be using tangent this time around. And what you do is you write tangent of the angle. So tangent of 33 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent. Opposite is x and adjacent is 7. So we have x over 7. So it's just a matter of solving this equation. When you have the variable, uh, sorry, when you have the number in the denominator, all you have to do is multiply both sides by that number. That way these will cancel each other out. And that's going to leave you with x equals whatever this is. Um, so 7 tangent 33, we can just put that right in the calculator the way it looks. 7 tangent 33. Whoops, that's too many threes. So that's 4.5458, which will round to 4.546. All right, so that is the answer to problem number one. So let's do the same thing for problem number two. The hypotenuse, always label the hypotenuse first. So I see the right angle, so that means this side over here is going to be the hypotenuse. Now, circle the angle, draw an arrow going away from it. That makes this side the opposite side. Um, that means the other side is the adjacent side, all right? Or you could say the side that's really close is adjacent. Now look at the two sides that we are dealing with. We have the 7 and we have the x. All right, there's nothing on this side. It's just the 7 and the x that is adjacent and hypotenuse. So which one of these functions involve adjacent and hypotenuse? Well, that's going to be the middle one, cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we will write cosine of the angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 7 over x. Now, <clears throat> when, the variable, when the variable is in the top, you multiply by the denominator. But when the variable is in the denominator, you swap these. All right, not just the x and the 33, but we're going to swap the x with this entire thing. All right, so the x is going to end up over here. And cosine 
33 is going to end up over here. So this is going to lead us straight to the final answer because we can put this in the calculator. 7 over cosine 33. So 7 over cosine 33. That is 8.347. Got to round up. 8.347. All right, problem number three. Again, let's start by labeling the hypotenuse, which is always across from the 90 degree angle. So we know that this will be the hypotenuse where the X is. Now circle the angle that you are given, draw an arrow going away from it. That will be the opposite leg. That means the other leg is the adjacent leg, the one that's close by. So which two sides are we dealing with? We have the X and the seven, all right? That's opposite and hypotenuse. Which function, which of the three functions deals with opposite and hypotenuse? Well, that's gonna be the first one. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we will write sine of 33 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, that is seven over x. Just like the last problem, when the variable is in the denominator, you swap these. So the x is gonna end up on the left, and on the right we will have seven over sine 33. And this will give us the final answer. Seven over sine 33. That is 12.853, got a round up, 12.853. All right, um, now problem number four. Let's start by labeling the hypotenuse, which is always across from the 90 degree angle. So we know that this seven will be the hypotenuse. Now circle the angle and draw an arrow pointing away from it, and that will be the opposite leg. The other leg is the adjacent leg, all right? It'll always be the one that's really close to the angle. So which two sides are we dealing with? Well, we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. The X and the seven is adjacent and hypotenuse. Which of the trig functions involves adjacent and hypotenuse? Well, that's gonna be the middle one, cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we will write cosine of the angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so x over seven. When the variable is in the top, you simply multiply both sides by the denominator. So we can just multiply both sides by seven. All right, that way the sevens cancel out. And we can just put this right in the calculator, seven cosine 33. Seven cosine 33. 5.871, got to round up, 5.871. All right, and that's it for number four. Number five, let's start by labeling the hypotenuse, which is always across from the 90 degree angle. 
So that means this is the hypotenuse right here. All right, next we circle the angle that we are given and draw an arrow pointing away from it. This will be the opposite side. The other remaining side is the adjacent side. It will always be the side that's really close. Now, which two sides are we dealing with? Well, the seven and the X, that's opposite and hypotenuse. Which trig function involves opposite and hypotenuse? Well, that's the first one. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we will write sine of the angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, x over 7. When the variable is in the numerator, we just multiply both sides by the denominator. So we're going to multiply both sides by 7. That way the 7's cancel out. And that's going to leave us with the answer. It's going to leave us with x equals. Now, 7 sine 33, we can just put that right in the calculator. 7 sine 33. So that's 3.812. All right, so that is it for number five. Number six, let's start by labeling the hypotenuse, which is always right across from the 90 degree angle. So this will be the hypotenuse right here. Now circle the angle and draw an arrow pointing away from it. That will be the opposite side. So the other side is the adjacent side the side that's really close to the angle. Now, which two sides are we dealing with? We have this X and we have the seven. That is the opposite and the adjacent. Which trig function involves opposite and adjacent? Well, that's the third one because tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we will start by writing tangent of the angle is equal to opposite over adjacent, so 7 over x. Now, when the variable is in the denominator, you swap these. Okay? When the variable was in the numerator, you multiply both sides by the denominator. But when the variable is in the denominator, you swap. So the x is going to end up over here and the 7 over tangent 33 will be over here. So uh, this will lead us to the final answer because this is something we can put in the calculator. Seven over tangent 33. That is 10.7 seven, nine. All right, problem number seven. So again, let's start by labeling the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse will always be right across from the 90 degree angle. So that means this side is the hypotenuse. Now, circle the angle that you're given and draw an arrow away from it, and that will indicate the opposite side. The other side is the adjacent side. So, which two sides are we dealing with? We have the X and the 32. That's opposite and adjacent. Which trig function is that? Well, that's the third one. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we will write down 
tangent of the angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. That's x over 32. When the variable is in the numerator, you just multiply both sides by the denominator, like this. That way, the denominators cancel out and you have x by itself. So that's going to leave you at the final answer. x equals whatever this is. So um, 32 tangent 46. Thirty two tangent forty six. So that's thirty three point one three seven. All right, so that is the final answer for number seven. So for number eight. Again, start by labeling the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. So that means this is the hypotenuse right here. Now circle the angle you are given, draw an arrow pointing away from it. That will give you the opposite side. The other side is the adjacent side. Okay. Um, which two sides are we dealing with? X and 8. That's opposite and hypotenuse. Which trig function is that? That's the first one. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So write sine of the angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. 8 over X. Now, is this the one where we multiply, or is this one where we swap? When the variable is in the denominator, that's the time when you swap. So we're going to end up with x equals 8 over sine 21. And that will lead us to the final answer. 8 over sine 21. So that's 22.323. All right, number nine. Start by labeling the hypotenuse, always across from the 90 degree angle. So this is the hypotenuse. Now circle the angle you're given. Draw an arrow going away from that angle, and that tells you which side is opposite. The other side is going to be adjacent. Which two sides are we going to be dealing with? We've got the 41 and we've got the x. That's adjacent and hypotenuse. Which trig function is that? That's the middle one. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we will write cosine of the angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, x over 41. Now, is this the one where we multiply or is this the one where we swap? When the variable is in the numerator, that's when you multiply by the denominator because then you can cancel these out. That leaves you straight at the answer. All right, x is by itself now. So put this in your calculator, 41 cosine 50. Twenty-six point three five four. Okay, last one. Um, let me just, let me bring down my little Sokotoa sign real quick.
Okay, last one. As always, we start by labeling the hypotenuse, which is always uh, across from the 90 degree angle. The corner of the little box always points at the hypotenuse, so that'll be right here. Next, we circle the angle that we are given, and we draw an arrow going away from it, and that will tell us which side is the opposite side. The other side is the adjacent side. So, which two sides are we really dealing with? We have the X and the 17. That's opposite and adjacent. Which trig function involves opposite and adjacent? Well, that's the third one. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So, we will write down tangent of the angle is opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be 17 over x. Now, is this the one where we multiply or swap? When the variable is in the denominator, this is when you swap. You swap the x and the tan 39. So the x will wind up over here, and then we will have 17 over tangent 39. And then that will give you the final answer because you can just put this in your calculator. 17 over tangent 39. 17 over tangent 39. So that's 20.993. And that is how you use sine, cosine, and tangent to find missing sides.